While many of those watching may live in apartments in cities or houses in suburbs, chances are that you have a good amount of space to yourself. After all, if an area is zoned correctly, people can be housed in such a way that saving space does not compromise the living conditions of those living there. However, there are some places where crowding people into tiny areas is simply the normal thing to do, and this has led to areas that are far too compact to be comfortable for those living there. So today, get ready to feel just a little bit claustrophobic as I count down the top 15 most crowded places on Earth. Number 15. Kowloon Walled City When it comes to density, few places have been quite as brutal as that of Kowloon Walled City. That's because at its peak, approximately 50,000 people lived in an area covering just 0.026 square kilometers, which is the equivalent of a whopping 1.9 million residents per square kilometer. Kowloon Walled City was first created in 1842 as a means for the Chinese military to keep an eye on the British colony of Hong Kong. However, by the early 20th century, they'd abandoned it, and instead squatters and refugees began to pour in. Made up of teetering brick and concrete high-rises up to 14 stories high, with wood dwellings sandwiched in between, the city was an absolute miserable place to live in, as it was not only infested with fugitives and criminal gangs, but also had dark, narrow streets, rudimentary plumbing and electric services, and tiny little apartments that were often home to drug dealers and prostitutes. Despite all this, the people there developed a tight-knit community, and while the Hong Kong government attempted to tear down the city after World War II, they were met with fierce resistance, and it wasn't until 1994 that the demolition was complete, and today Kowloon Walled City is a park consisting of some green space with ponds, pagodas, and most importantly, a few cool artifacts from the original city. Number 14. Mong Kok Mong Kok, which in Cantonese means crowded corner, is true to its name. With an average of 130,000 people packed inside each square kilometer, Hong Kong's Mong Kok district is one of the most densely populated places on Earth, yet it manages to be this way in style. A fusion of historic and modern high-rises, bright neon signs, countless small shops, local food stalls, street markets, and restaurants, it is because of all of this action that Mong Kok has become a major tourist district. Whether you want to shop till you drop or simply go for a walk, nothing is quite like hustling and bustling through the crowds in Mong Kok. Number 13. Dhaka With more than 19.5 million people living there and more than 23,200 people being packed in per square kilometer, Bangladesh's capital of Dhaka is not only the most densely populated city in the country, but one of the most crowded cities in all of the entire world. Reportedly growing at a speed of about 2,000 people per day, life here revolves around the local markets, and when not hanging out there, many workers toil in the heavy polluted Buraganga River in order to make a living. And while this may be a less than ideal situation, there are some people who still love the city. However, I think it's fair to say that Dhaka is not a place for those who like their personal space. Number 12. Indian Trains Given India's current population of about 1.2 billion people, it's not surprising that the country has the second largest rail network in the world. Ridden by about 23 million passengers a day, it should come as no surprise that moving this many people often becomes tricky, and thanks to overcrowding, it is quite common for passengers to hang out on the roof and on the sides of the system's trains. More specifically, low fares have attracted millions of Indians to this rail service, and in some municipalities such as Mumbai, they're absolutely free. However, it should be noted that while these ticket subsidies do assist passengers, railways tend to take advantage of this by packing in as many people as possible, and this has led to dangerous overcrowding. So, while riding on an Indian train is certainly exhilarating, it's also quite dangerous. Number 11. Aple Chao Aple Chao, which translates to Duck Tongue Island, is a 1.3 square kilometer island off the coast of Hong Kong. While this name comes from the shape of the island, what makes it far more notable is the massive amount of people that squeeze onto it. More specifically, the island had a pretty uneventful history for most of its life, but in 1994, a bridge connecting the island to the main island of Hong Kong was created, causing it to quickly be the subject of rapid development. While its historic main street has been maintained, the island is now covered with soaring skyscrapers, putting it in an interesting conflict between the old and the new. 
the island is also known for its incredible seafood, amazing harbor-related facilities, and subway connection to the rest of Hong Kong, giving it a pretty interesting culture and nightlife. So while Aple Chow may be crowded, it's a relatively nice place to go and visit. Number 10. Ebai Island Ebai is the most populous island of the Kwajalein Atoll in the Marshall Islands. And for those of you who have no idea where that is, the location is in the Northwest Oceania, near the middle of the Pacific, yet despite its remoteness, the island is still packed with people. You see, the residents of Ebai are generally the descendants of Marshall Islanders who were evacuated from the other islands in the Kwajalein Atoll after the U.S. military conducted nuclear bomb tests in the area. While this was less than ideal, the islanders have since made up a population of more than 15,000, with over 50% of the population being under the age of 18. The end result is a population density of about 40,000 inhabitants per square kilometer. Yet unfortunately, the situation likely won't get any better anytime soon. That's because migration to Ebai Island, thanks to housing, electricity, sewage, and job problems on other islands, has grown exponentially, while the number of facilities available on Ebai Island has not grown at all. So, I'd warn against staying the night if you can avoid it. Number 9. Shibuya Crossing No one does rush hour quite like the Japanese, and Shibuya Crossing is a symbol of that. That's because it's best known for the incredible scramble that happens every time the traffic lights turn red, stopping all the vehicles in every direction to allow a huge wave of pedestrians to flood into the intersection. While this lasts for just a few moments, it's an incredible event due to the fact that as many as 3,000 people cross it at any given time. As you might expect, the street is surrounded by television screens that flash ads all day long, making it an important center for both transport and advertising. However, the reason why any of this is possible at all is thanks to the fact that the Shibuya Crossing is a center for youth fashion and culture, as over a dozen major department store branches can be found in the area. Beyond this, many using the crossing are simply going in or out of Shibuya Station, which is Tokyo's third busiest transportation hub, and therefore attracts a large amount of people. However, even if you're not from Tokyo, you still may recognize the crossing, as it's appeared in popular films such as Lost in Translation and The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, so it definitely is a true highlight of the city. Number 8. Qingdao Huiquan Beach while nothing quite beats a day of basking in the sun and swimming in the waves at a beach, Qingdao number one bathing beach is a little more popular than the rest. Located in Huquan Bay in eastern China, it stands apart from most other touristy beaches for being one of the most crowded beaches in the world. Popular thanks to its clear green water, calm waves, golden sand, and beautiful location between three sides of a mountain. These features attract about 200,000 tourists per day to this 580-meter-long and 40-meter-wide stretch of sand. The beach really became developed between 1984 and 2003, as it was then that the local government repaired and expanded it on a large scale. As a result, it took on a new look and today has more than 900 showers, various restaurants, lots of cool bars, and some nice cafes. In an attempt to keep things organized, the beach is divided into swimming and non-swimming zones. Despite the crowds, visitors can enjoy their time there by sunbathing, swimming, playing volleyball, or dining on the beach. When you further consider that Qingdao is also home to sites such as Huiquan Square, the Naval Museum, and Luzung Park, it's not hard to see why it's a popular tourist attraction. Number 7. Santa Cruz de los Lote Better known in English as Holy Cross of the Islet, Santa Cruz del Islote is an artificial island located off the coast of Colombia. It has a spot on this list thanks to the fact that it's widely considered to be the single most densely populated island on Earth, although estimates of its population vary greatly. Yet despite the discrepancies, it seems that there are likely about 1,200 inhabitants on the island, that is, for reference, about the size of two soccer fields. This is possible due to the fact that settlers have built their homes upwards, and in order to provide more space, local fishermen have used coral, debris, stone, and other materials to build up the land at low tide. As you might imagine, somewhere with such little space has nowhere for visitors to stay. And in many ways, the island is so isolated that it has developed a very unique way of life. For example, the island has no police, yet no crime, has houses that are passed down from generation to generation, has two shops and a school, and has no sewage system and no running water. If that wasn't crazy enough, drinking water is not always available, as it's provided every three weeks by a Colombian Navy ship, making daily living quite difficult. 
However, despite the conditions, the crystal clear waters and interesting architecture makes the island very well liked. Number 6. Tokyo Subway with approximately 9.5 million residents, Tokyo tops the charts as the busiest city in the world. As you might expect, a large population necessitates a large public transit system, and the city of Tokyo certainly has this under lock. Now, it's estimated that roughly 6.8 million people use the system each day, and as you might expect, this means that things often get very crowded. In fact, things often get so crowded that the Tokyo transit system resorts to using passenger pushers. Also known as Oisha, their main job is to ensure each and every one of the passengers on the platform gets on the train. During rush hour, their job often includes physically pushing passengers into trains to ensure that those trains depart on time. While it may seem a bit outlandish, it turns out that it's only through instating measures such as this that the Tokyo subway functions so well. After all, the subway is known for being the quickest yet cheapest way to get around, and the trains are so punctual that they will issue an apology if they're as little as 20 seconds too early or too late. For example, in 2017, the management on the Tsukuba Express line between Tokyo and the city of Tsukuba issued a written apology for leaving the station 20 seconds early. That is, at 9.44 and 20 seconds instead of 9.44 and 40 seconds. So, given its punctuality, yeah, I can give the subway a passing grade despite it being so crowded. Number 5. Salsette Island As far as population density goes, Salsette Island is pretty nuts. That's because despite being a modest 609 square kilometers, it has more than 23 million inhabitants, making it one of the most overcrowded spots on the planet. Now, the name for Salsette Island derives from the Marathi word Sasashti, which means 66, and this being in reference to the 66 villages that existed on the island. However, the island was occupied by Christian farmers in 55 AD, Hindu kings in the centuries afterwards, a Muslim sultanate in 1343, the Portuguese Empire in 1534, and the Marathis in 1737, and the British in 1774. And when combined with modern population growth, the whole 66 villages thing has kind of dissipated. Instead, it's now filled with houses and apartments, and while harsh realities such as the fact that the island is located along several fault lines may make it seem like it's a place no one would want to live in, it turns out that Salset Island is actually a very desirable area. Due to its proximity to Mumbai, it's home to many of the city's affluent industrialists, powerful politicians, and prominent personalities, making the water separating the island from the city proper a sort of physical barrier between the relatively wealthy and those living in slums on the mainland. So while I would agree that Salset Island is a relatively nice area, the fact that the city is divided in this way isn't all that pretty. Number 4. China's Dead Sea The 500 million year old Yucheng Salt Lake, which is better known as the Dead Sea of China, is not only known for its history and beauty, but also for being the world's most crowded natural swimming pool. You see, in order to escape from the sweltering heat during the summers, thousands of visitors come here to spend time in the lake and cool off. It can accommodate as many as 10,000 people at once, and is called the Dead Sea of China because of the 22% salinity of the water that allows swimmers to float freely on the surface in a fashion similar to how swimmers would in the Dead Sea in the Middle East. With so many people in the pool at once, swimming is virtually impossible, and generally speaking, bathers just have barely enough space to stand in place. It should also be noted that when everyone is in the pool at once, a visual kaleidoscope of colors is created as each swimmer generally wears a brightly colored inflatable of some sort. However, China's Dead Sea is also colorful due to naturally occurring phenomena. More specifically, the presence of algae in the water produces chemicals that turn the lake into an incredibly vibrant pink and green color. And while this may be a bit off-putting, it's also seen as an attractive feature. So despite the crowded conditions, over 1 million tourists visit the lake each and every summer. Except me. Number 3. The Panama Canal Ranked by the American Society of Civil Engineers as one of the seven wonders of the modern world, the Panama Canal is easily Panama's foremost piece of infrastructure. After all, this 82-kilometer-long waterway between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans has dramatically decreased the travel times for ships between the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. Although, as you may expect, the Panama Canal can also get quite busy as a result. As of late, the Panama Canal has served over 900,000 vessels and counting, and since it permits shippers of commercial goods to transport cargo more quickly and inexpensively between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, it's one of immense economic use. 
In order to function, the canal uses a lock system to lift ships up by 26 meters to the elevation of the next canal, with approximately 14,000 ships using the Panama Canal every year. It takes on average about 8 to 10 hours for each ship to make the transit through the canal, depending on the lineup at the docks, making the whole thing a pretty packed affair. Regardless, I'd say that the Panama Canal is pretty well organized, and if you like to watch the ships that operate there yourself, I'd suggest viewing the canal at Miraflores Locks Visitor Center in Panama City. There, you can also look across the pond at the Agua Clara Visitor Center on the Atlantic side of the canal, which is located in the city of Colón and offers another vantage point where both the ships and the canal can be viewed. As a result, whether you're a big-time cargo shipper or a small-time tourist, I think that a trip to the Panama Canal is certainly worth it. Number 2. Male While Male is probably one of the least well-known world capitals, it's easily one of the more interesting. That's because it's the capital of the Maldives, which is an island nation in the Indian Ocean, located about 640 kilometers southwest of Sri Lanka. With a population of 252,000 and an area of 8.3 square kilometers, the capital of this small island nation is also one of the most densely populated cities in the world. The city consists of a central island, an airport island, and four other islands governed by the Malay City Council. As the seat of the government for the Maldivians, it has central courts, a government hospital, public and private schools with instruction in English, and a vocational training school focused on engineering. Malay is also known for its mosques and colorful buildings. The local Islamic center features a mosque, a library, and a distinctive gold dome. Beyond the actual buildings, Malay also has a central harbor, complete with a popular fish and produce market. And when all of these things are taken into account, it's not hard to see why having all the trappings of a capital city in such a small area can make things pretty crowded. Now also what's interesting about Malay is that it wasn't always like this. In the past, it was considered to be the King's Island, as it was the palace of the ancient dynasties and was surrounded by walled fortifications and gates. Over the years, this has changed, and now the island is opened up to not only regular people, but also to tourists. Accounting for about 28% of GDP, tourism in the country is huge, and tourists who come are serviced by Maldivian Airlines and Malay International Airport, all of which are located in Malay. However, it should be noted that most tourists stay away from the capital and stay planted at one of the many high-class island resorts outside of main urban areas. Yet despite this reality, the capital city is still gorgeous, and I definitely recommend visiting if you ever get the chance to travel to the Maldives. Number 1. Manila Manila, which is popularly known as the Pearl of the Orient, is the Philippines' capital city and located on the northwestern coast of the country. While this bustling metropolis is full of things to do due to its wide array of museums, parks, theaters, shopping malls, and restaurants, it's also somewhere where personal space is a major issue. With a total population of more than 14.4 million contained within an area of 42.8 square kilometers, it is one of the world's most densely populated cities, as its density of more than 42,800 people per square kilometer is nearly twice that of New York City. In terms of the city itself, metropolitan Manila contains a significant proportion of the country's population, and the city is expected to grow by more than 3 million people by 2025. Well, the reason why this is the case is primarily thanks to the phenomenon of rural to urban migration. This high-speed migration has put a strain on municipal services, and due to the vulnerable economic position of these migrants, economic disparity has become a massive problem. In fact, this disparity is obvious in the physical makeup of the city, as while Manila's affluent generally live in the booming business district of Makati City, the city's destitute tends to live in slums on the fringes. Spiking land prices have only worsened this phenomenon, and the insane urban sprawl that's resulted has made Manila a living nightmare to live in for many. In fact, in the poorest areas, homes are built on stilts, clothes are strung between rickety roofs, and daily life is nothing short of chaotic. There's also major issues with transport, as the super busy highways and packed subway systems have caused many to take motorcycles so they can simply weave between the lanes to get to work on time. While this all may sound pretty negative, the one positive note is that the government has taken an active effort to resettle portions of the population in less crowded areas. And while these efforts have had limited success thus far, I hope they can continue so that Manila can grow into a much more enjoyable city to live in. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.